What's up guys, welcome back to The Educated Barfly. Today I got a little special treat for you. A lot of people have noticed that I had this Zubrovka bison grass flavored vodka um, on the back bar and a lot of people have been asking me to make a bison grass uh, drink. Uh, that being said, I want to oblige you, so I did a little research and found a great cocktail from a bartender named Rob Kruger, who is the bartender and owner of a bar called Extra Fancy that he opened up with another bartending pal that he met while he opened the Macau Trading Company in New York City. Uh, Rob Kruger is a bartender that started, he cut his teeth uh, working at employees only, going from bar back to bar manager. And if you know anything about employees only, you'll know that they have like a two year bar backing program. So you gotta go in and be a bar back for two years and really, really, really uh, excel at that to be able to then be made a bartender. And they actually have this thing where bartenders wear like almost like a chef's coat and they like bestow the chef's coat upon them, which I think is, you know, honestly, before, like, like a while ago, I thought, you know, that's a little pretentious. But honestly, after becoming like the program director and then bar manager at Cole's French Dip and having to train people, having a two-year program where people have to go through it and learn everything is actually a really smart thing to do because then you know that everything, everyone is doing everything at the same time. Uh, so if I hadn't said it before, this cocktail is called uh, Baby You're Driving and it is an equal parts uh, cocktail. But I gotta say, let's do a little, let's have a little talk about this bison grass because uh, we mentioned uh, Zubrovka in the episode where we did that. We did a flip with uh, tonka bean. And tonka bean has a chemical called coumarin in it. Well, bison grass also has that same chemical coumarin. Coumarin is a chemical that when its molecular structure is changed, it becomes another thing called coumadin, I think, right? Is that it? Is it Kumatin? I think it's Kumatin. I haven't done like, all, I haven't like reread all the research that I did, but I think it's called Kumatin and it's a blood thinner. And because of a really antiquated study in the 1950s, it has been banned in the United States uh, for commercial use. So you can get tonka beans and you could probably order bison grass maybe over the internet and get it yourself, but you can't actually sell it. So uh, Zubrovka is a Polish, uh, Zubrovka is made by a Polish distillery uh, that's been making this same vodka since the Middle Ages, actually. And they have an American version and they have a Polish version. The Polish version actually has the Kumarin in it. The American version does not. What they did is they took all of these different uh, spices and plants and tried to equate the flavor of that Kumarin, which is that, that tonka bean flavor, which is like, it kind of tastes like freshly cut hay almost, or it has this like kind of stone fruit flavor. Um, it is so sought after that chefs, like, like high-end chefs all over the country are getting busted putting it on their menus. Um, but they do make this, so this is the American version. That being said, uh, which I said again, I always say, I say that being said a lot when I'm like switching thoughts as like a transition. Is it a good transition? I don't know. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But Marius and I are working on getting an actual bottle of Polish uh, vodka. So... Uh, I'm not sure if Mary's told his dad yet. And I don't even know if his dad watches this, but if he does, we, uh, Marius' dad is going to be visiting pretty soon and he's actually taking a trip to Poland before he visits. So Marius, I hope, and if he didn't, I'm going to make him, asked his dad to get us a bottle of Zubrovka so that maybe we can do a tasting between the American Zubrovka and the Polish Zubrovka that actually has the bison grass in it. Uh, in this bottle is an actual piece of bison grass to make things even more. So when I bought this, I was like, wait, wait a minute. If this is illegal in the United States, why does it have a piece of bison grass in it? And if, or, or is it fake grass or that they're just like pretending is bison grass? And what, we, and what we, Marius did a little bit of research for me on this one. And what he found out is they put actual real bison grass into the bottle, but the, they either extract or they don't put in that coumarin element and they equate the flavor with other spices and plants and botanicals and things from the area. Is that right? Yeah, I think if they just put the the one leaf in what like so you got a blade, blade, of blade of grass. It's just like one blade of grass that, is sitting in here. That blade is not enough to make it like to impart the flavor. Yeah, I mean I'm sure that when they're macerating it in the distillation, they put like tons of it in there. Um, cool, so let's get into the drink. This is gonna be a really good one and it's gonna be like really light, refreshing summer cocktail for you guys. So first thing we're gonna do is one ounce of the Zubrovka. Oh, and I forgot to mention that Zubrovka actually means bison grass in Polish. So it's bison, it's basically called bison grass. 
And then we're gonna do one ounce of uh, pamplemousse, which is a uh, which is pamplemousse rosé from Combier, and it's a um, grapefruit liqueur. You can do one ounce of that. And then we're gonna do one ounce of Lele Balanc. And then we're gonna do one ounce of lime juice. I'm gonna add our ice, spill some stuff. Get a, a good hard shake. Sometimes it needs a little prodding. Now you're gonna wanna use something a little bit larger of a coupe or something with a little bit more volume because this is a more voluminous cocktail. Cool, that just really doesn't bother. It's like nice, good wash line there. We're just gonna strain it out. We're gonna not answer the phone. That is, and it's, it's like, you know, I get these phone calls sometimes that are like scam likely. So I guess evidently some uh, companies have gotten my uh, phone number and now I get these weird like, win a vacation calls. And it's really irritating because I get a couple a day now. And I've like tried to put myself on like a do not call list, but it just doesn't really work. So anyway, uh, I pre-did this garnish. So you've got like a nice little, uh, I guess, orange fold. And then we speared it to a little bit of mint here. Uh, I didn't want to fumble on it. You know, I'm trying to like up my garnish game. You guys know that. Um, I'm really used to doing very clean, just very simple garnishes. But I think it's kind of nice to show you guys some extra garnishing technique. So I wanted to do a little bit um, of something different and something new. Uh, I didn't want to futz with it on the video, so I just pre-did it. But then we'll go like that, and it is going to fall in the glass. That's so wonderful. Ugh. Be careful, guys. There. You want it to, like, sit right I wanted to use this nice cocktail pick, too. All right. Let's take, a, let's take a sip. Let's fix this and take a sip. All right. Cheers. You know, that is so refreshing. So I would think, I thought that maybe the pamplemousse and the lillet wasn't gonna be sweet enough to balance out the lime and it was gonna be really tart, but it's actually very well balanced. You know, you get the tartness of the lime, but you get that pamplemousse, that grapefruit. It's got that nice sort of grapefruit bite. It's just sweet enough to really balance it perfectly. The Zubrovka, can I taste it? I can kind of smell it, kind of taste it though. Yeah, it's faint, but it's there. You get that little sort of stone fruit right at the end, a sort of like Zubrovka, Tonka bean flavor. Uh, so there you have it, my friends. The baby you're driving from Rob Kruger at Extra Fancy. If you guys want to go to Extra Fancy, it is in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. The menu looks phenomenal. The drinks look phenomenal. They do something called a Dickelback, which when I go to New York, I'm going to go drink, which is a little Coronita with a shot of rye and a shot of pickle juice. And if you know anything about Kohl's, you know that we make the greatest picklebacks there. And it is one of my favorite things. So if you like this channel, please hit like and subscribe. And definitely check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash the educated barfly. I will see you guys next time. Oh, and uh, speaking of... Uh, what did I forget? Yeah, no, no. Like, I always forget something in every episode. beans and bison. Do you know what the Native American word for uh, bison is? No, what's the Native American word for the word? Tatonka. So you're trying to draw a... I don't know. I was just saying it. Tonka bean. Tatanka is the Native American and word bison. for bison. Mm -hmm. And then, but like, but is Tonka, is Tonka bean, well, Tonka bean actually is from South America and Central America is where Tonka beans come from. It's like a legume that comes from a tree. Do bison tastes like Tonka bean. So are there, I mean, honestly, I got to say though, like the Native Americans are like an ancient people. And I guarantee you that there was a lot of walking backwards and forwards between Central America and what is now the United States, right? So 
there could be some crossover in language there, right? Or just a coincidence. Or just a coincidence. It's a, I mean, but is it a coincidence though? I don't know. I don't know if I really believe in coincidences. I kind of feel like, I don't know. I'm not going to get into a whole like philosophical discussion with you about coincidences or whatever, but um, that is also a very astute observation. And you, my friend, got those sneaky, those sneaky little astute observations that you do. So uh, yeah, I don't know. Why don't you guys mull that over while you drink the drink? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. I'll see you guys next time.